Hi, One Hour Smart Home here, and today we're going to give you three ways to fix Nest Low Power or Nest Low Battery issues. So a lot of people comment or question some of the other videos and ask us how to solve the problems they're having with their Nest Thermostat battery or Nest Thermostat Low Power. So we've got three ways today that you can potentially fix your Nest Low Power issues as well as a couple ways to diagnose what your Nest thermostat issues are. So uh, what we've got here is a Nest Generation 3 smart thermostat, but we also have made this video. It will work with the Nest E thermostat, the Nest Gen 2 thermostat, and sometimes, in some cases, the Nest Gen 1 thermostat. And when you have Nest Low Power uh, or Nest Low Battery, what is going to happen is sometimes your Nest won't function at all, sometimes it won't connect to Wi-Fi, or sometimes it's just dead on the wall and nothing is happening. So diagnosing that takes a couple of things. Uh, what we're going to do is show you how to go ahead and take a look at the settings to see where your Nest battery levels and Nest power is. And then we're going to show you the three ways that you can actually fix it. So one of the things we can do to check the battery levels and how the Nest is performing and the power getting to the Nest is to go into the settings. So all we're gonna do here is click on the menu down at the bottom. You wanna click on these settings gear. So we go ahead and click on that. And now we're just gonna scroll all the way over to the right. So we go to technical info and that is where we're gonna find our power and battery settings. In here, we're just gonna click on the very top icon, which says power. Now, the power setting is gonna show you the battery voltage and charge level, VOC, VIN, and LIN. Now, the two metrics that I typically look at are battery level and LIN. If the battery level is above 3.7 and sometimes 3.6, really you're probably in good shape with your battery levels. Anything above 3.7 is gonna be good and you don't have any issues really with low power. Now the other thing to look at is the LIN. Typically the cutoff for this is about 20 MA where the Nest thermostat will properly work. At 20 MA, sometimes it will work. Right at 20 MA, sometimes it won't work. But under 20 MA, you're probably gonna have Nest low battery issues. Above 20 MA, you're probably not gonna have Nest low battery issues. But at 20 MA, sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. So it's kind of 50-50 there where you will have issues, but the cutoff line is 20 MA. So here we have 40 MA and 3.8 battery voltage. So this Nest has good battery power in charge. It's holding a charge as well as it has good power coming into it. However, if you are below 3.7 or you're below the 20 MA line, you may have battery or nest low battery issues. So we're gonna identify how to fix those now and the three different options that you can use to potentially solve your nest low battery issues. So we're gonna get into the first and easiest way to fix a nest low battery or nest low power issue. Um, the first one is to use just a simple charging cord. This is a older style Android charging cord. And uh, we'll put a link to one of these below. And all you have to do for this is plug it into the back of the Nest. And this is typically a solution if your Nest maybe sat on the shelf at a big box store for a long time and was just the last in the inventory and you put it on and it's not turning on or you're having issues with it, or maybe your HVAC system was off for a long time and the battery completely drained down and you need to give your Nest thermostat a little bit of an extra boost to get started. Or if this sat in a cold car or a cold house and the thermostat wasn't on for a long time, uh, that battery is gonna drain down and you need to have some way to fix it. So to use this, uh, you just need one of these charging cables. This is like a older style Android charging cable. We'll put a link below to this cable or similar cables that will work for this. So go ahead and click on that. And you just take the nest off the wall. And on the back here, you can see there is a charging port. You just go ahead and you plug the nest right in to the, uh, or you plug the cord right into the nest and then go ahead and plug this into like a typical phone charger and uh, give this probably about an hour, maybe two hours to charge up. 
and then you can put it back on the wall and that's going to provide you a, a solution for the nest load battery now if you're having a systemic problem which is caused either by your heating system having a malfunction or not enough power getting the nest from your HVAC system, this is only gonna be a temporary fix. This is something that will not solve your problem in the long term, but it can get you through a couple of days if you're having issues with nest low battery or nest low power issues, and it's a good way to get your nest working in an emergency when you're having a low power issue and you just need to get through a couple days. So that is the first solution and the easiest solution, just the charging cord, We'll put a link to one of these below, but you might have one of these around your house. And you just, you know, uh, put this back on the wall like so. Now, the next option for uh, solving your issues with the Nest Power is if you're not getting enough LIN voltage or you're not having a high enough battery charge, um, what you can do is add a common wire transformer. So we're gonna just uh, show you this right here. This is a common wire transformer. Really what it is, is a 24 volt uh, transformer. It plugs in and it has two wires here. Now we have a whole video that shows you how to install this and set it up. And I recommend if you're having this issue, go ahead and click on that link below, um, as well as we'll include a link to this. But the theory behind this is that uh, this is a transformer that will provide power to your nest if your HVAC system is not providing enough power. It just plugs in, you can plug it into uh, a wall outlet and then wired up into your nest. You probably wanna find a way to uh, hide the cord somehow. So this isn't always the best looking option, but this will get you through uh, a nest low power issue. And then you can always find somebody to wire this in or hardwire this in and uh, hide the wiring behind the walls and whatnot. But um, this will provide enough power to power the nest. And what happens with these two wires here is that you just take uh, one wire and you would put it in the RH terminal and the other wire in the C terminal. And basically what this is doing is creating a circuit uh, with power that is providing power to your nest. Now, if you've already got an RH uh, wire in here, you could put this in also the same wire as your RH wire, or you could put it in the RC wire and C wire. So you can do RH and C or RC and C, and you could also put it in with the existing R wire wherever you've got it, if it's an R, H, or RC. And why that is is because your R power ports are uh, places where you can provide power to the thermostat. So either one of these allows you to provide power to the Nest thermostat, and uh, the C wire is basically a neutral wire or the return path for current so that the Nest can charge. So when you're plugging this in, uh, pretty simple, you just wire this up into the thermostat, and then go ahead and plug this in. And once you plug it in, it will have power to the uh, smart thermostat. So just a good place to start there. Now, another more permanent option, or you can use it in conjunction with this, is um, if you don't wanna have any wires dangling outside the nest, or you don't have a way to route those wires, is you can take uh, your G wire. And before I go too far on that, we do have an entire video um, on how to install that common wire transformer. So check that out, it's very in depth. Uh, I don't wanna to get too into it too much here. Um, the other option for adding a common wire or uh, getting your Nest low battery, low power issue solved is to uh, take your G wire, uh, which is your fan wire, and take the G wire and put it in the C terminal. And then you're gonna to need to also take your G wire and move it to the C terminal in your HVAC system. So you have to open up your HVAC system and move that G wire to the C terminal. And what that does is it provides a path for current to return and charge through your nest. So the common wire is essentially a neutral wire um, that allows a path for continuous charging for your nest. So uh, we do have another video on that, which we'll put down below. And that one shows you every step you need to take uh, in order to uh, fix your nest low battery and low power issue and change your G wire to a C wire or a common wire uh, for installation. Now, uh, another thing is that sometimes you can be experiencing a low power or low battery issue on your nest that is not caused by the nest at all. Um, and there's two ways that it can be caused. One is your HVAC system isn't putting enough power and all these solutions that we just provided you can potentially be a way to solve that issue or your HVAC system is locked out or is not working. And your HVAC system can turn off or cannot be working for a variety of reasons. 
most of the time there are safeguards inside of your HVAC system uh, that will automatically shut off the furnace if it detects an unsafe condition, like uh, too hot of a furnace temperature. So when you're having that issue, the furnace no longer provides power to your nest and you will get a nest low battery and low power issue. And a lot of people like to think that it is the nest thermostat that's causing an issue when it is actually potentially your HVAC system causing the issue. And if you're having those issues with your HVAC system, you gotta go through a diagnostic on how to diagnose the HVAC system and fix it. Um, but the way that you can check and see if your HVAC system or your nest is the issue is you can actually go ahead and take your W1 wire out here and your RH wire here and you would just wire these together with the power off and let your HVAC system run through a full cycle, five or 10 minutes. And if your HVAC system will continue to run with no issues, um, when you've got these two wired together, basically what that is is creating a circuit for the HVAC system. It's essentially doing what the nest would do, but without any kind of temperature gauge, um, is that that's just having your system run. It's sending the signal and there's no thermostat or no smart controls on it. So you can know either if your HVAC system stops, you have an issue in the furnace and there is a safety or limit switch going off, or when you've got these wired together and nothing happens at your furnace or it shuts off after a minute or two or three minutes or four minutes, it means that the issue is in your furnace. So um, if it does shut off, once you've got these hot wired together, your furnace should not shut off when you've got these hot wired together because you're sending a, a signal to continually keep running. Um, if it shuts off when these are wired together, you have a problem at your furnace. If it does not shut off when you've got these two wired together, um, then it means your furnace is okay and you've got a problem with the Nest thermostat. Um, so all you do is you just touch these two together like so, and you might be able to hear in the background our HVAC system turning on, and uh, that is all you have to do. Now, if you want to do this safely, the right way to do it is uh, turn your power off to your uh, furnace system, wire them together, and then turn the power back on so that you don't get shocked. Uh, I deal with this stuff all the time, so not too concerned about it, but for most of you, that's a way safer way to do it. Um, now, a couple easy fixes that you will typically find when you're having a Nest low power or Nest low battery issue um, that is caused by your HVAC system, I'm just gonna put those back in, are you will either have a furnace fuse that is blown, which is very easy to replace, um, we'll put a link to a video we have on how to replace your furnace fuse as well as a furnace fuse that will typically work. It's a three amp fuse that you typically find at a uh, auto parts store or home improvement store. They're also the same kind of fuses that are in your car. Or what you can have is uh, the flame sensors inside your HVAC system or the limit switches inside your HVAC system go bad. And those parts are actually really easy to replace and they're pretty inexpensive. They're, you know, like between seven and 12 bucks or sometimes even two or $3. Um, and it is something that if you are comfortable with some minor home improvement projects that you can do. But those are where I would start with that. Sometimes with the flame sensor, it's as easy as just cleaning it off with uh, like some emery cloth or steel wool and just get that nice and clean because there will get corrosion on there and soot that builds up in your HVAC system. So that's one way to do it. And the other, uh, for those limit switch sensors, sometimes the limit switch sensors just go bad and you can go ahead and replace those. Um, we'll do another video that kind of diagnoses furnace stuff in depth, but this was primarily based around helping you fix nest low battery and low power issues. So we hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe. If you want to support us, go ahead and click on any of the links below, visit our website or sign up for one of our courses. Um, we do always appreciate that or buy me a coffee below. So thank you for watching and we will see you next time.